Okay, so <clears throat> this video recording is about the homework on threads. So specifically, the thread assignment has three parts and this presentation is all about the second part. So how do you solve polynomial evaluation using round robin or cyclic order? Okay, so this is basically how do you assign a thread to evaluate some of the terms, right? So if you have uh, this polynomial uh, that has max degree 5 so it has six terms and this is the representation right so these are the array indices 0 1 2 3 and so on and an array ind index also means the degree right so here if you have array index 5 that means you know it's uh, it's uh, symbolically denotes that it's a uh, power 5 right and the coefficients are also there so when you use more than more than uh, you know one word like two or three then there are different ways in which you can slice and dice the polynomial into smaller parts and assign these smaller parts to a thread to evaluate okay so round robin is one of them so I'll talk about round robin how do you assign the work that is essentially multiplying uh, you know x uh, power number of times degree number of times and then multiplying that with coefficient value so let's go to the second slide which basically shows that so here you know you have the same polynomial and I'm talking about the round robin assignment of threads uh, to a term so for example thread 0 uh, first picks 9x to the power zeros okay so that's why the array index is 0 where 9 is stored that's the coefficient and then coefficient 3 is stored at index 1 that is degree 1 now look at how threads are assigned so the first term goes to thread 0 the second term goes to thread 1 and then thread 2 and then this is interesting because thread 0 cycles back right so 0 1 2 and then again 0 1 2 and so on so this is called cyclic order or round robin assignment of work threads to work and work is basically evalu evaluating a term so look at this slide this would further clarify now once each thread has done its part of the job you uh, need to assemble the results add all of them uh, to get one final result right now uh, so here the basic idea is you know there, there should be some way in which you can assign thread and ID like 0 1 2 and you could do that if uh, from a main method so think about um, the main method that's the first method that gets executed you basically uh, you know assign ID to different threads right so you could do that and then you have to somehow pass that information to the th uh, to the to the to the run method so in run method there should be some way by which you know you know what's the thread that is executing a particular code so you have to pass the information that a thread needs from main as you create the threads so here's a hint so you have a run method so this is inside a class right so in this class you can have instance variables like number of threads what's the value of x like x to the power you know 3 so that x and then what's the thread id right so this class should have uh, instance variables uh, in order to you know store them so once you create this runnable object that contains uh, you know run method those information should be available in the instance variable from there you assign it to uh, this load these local variables so I'm assuming you're somehow passing this information from the main method to this run method so these are available okay so if you have number of threads known the value of x known thread id known then you could have a, a for loop that starts from thread id and then uh, you basically you know what you do is increment it by number of threads and then stop when the index goes you know more becomes more than number of threads okay so and then for each index that is the you know the array coefficient array uh, that index uh, index to the coefficient array basically you know you you, you have some notion of uh, calculating uh, individual term so you know the value of x and index and coefficient value so basically you evaluate the term 
and then keep on incrementing so local result is a value that is for each thread so if there are three threads then there will be three local results each computed by a unique thread so finally somehow you you know add all of them up to get the final result okay so final result is the value that gets returned you don't have to return you can store it in uh, in an instance variable called res result or final result as well all right so i hope this will help you in solving uh, round robin problem so uh, just to you know reiterate so if this for loop is run by thread 0 so the first index that the thread will do is 0 right and the next one it will do is 3 because 0 plus 3 number of threads is 3 and then again you do plus 3 and then it is index 6 so thread 0 will go through 0 3 and 6 now let's talk about thread number 2 so for uh, thread number 2 the thread ID is 1 so index becomes 1 4 uh, and then it cannot become 7 because uh, you know mm, oh, there, there is a bug in this code so the bug here is it should not be number of threads it should be number of elements in the array okay so if you correct this then this becomes correct so uh, it should be less than number of elements so if you have 7 then the maximum value index can hold is 6 so uh, thread number 1 will go through 1 and 4 those will be the two in index values and thread number two will start from uh, you know index it will be equal to two and then five so two and five so those are the two terms that that thread will evaluate right so different th threads are actually picking different terms and adding them up so two plus three is five one plus three is four zero three six okay so that this is the exact calculation that should happen uh, in this run method so hopefully this makes sense so let's stop here if you have any question please come to my office hours